Right, now, this is between fish and serpents. And what we're going to get at is that fish and serpents are essentially the same thing. Oh. Because, whereas we said fish come from the depths and swim up and you've got to keep a hold of it, <laughs> like these unconscious impulses that you've got to catch, memes, let's call them, mm. unconscious memes. Mm -hmm. uh, serpents, the same, but a bit more external. A bit more external. Whereas the fish are going to come up inside, the snake's more likely to come from the outside. So a fish is a dual creature. It looks like a willy, but it's not formless. mine. I was going to say. Well, they call it a they call it a trouser snake, don't mine, they? Mine's more like an egg. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, a trouser snake. So yes, so it's saying sorry, and then like I've been saying trouser snake. <laughs> so what this serpent is is. Unconscious things. As Cetus, you know, Pisces is like internal. Yeah. Cetus was external. Right. Fish is internal. The snake is a bit more external. It's also internal, but it's external. It looks like a, a phallus, but it's formless in this watery, feminine way. Uh, when a snake opens its mouth to, to bite you, it looks like a vagina inside. It's a phallic. It's this dual creature. It's poisonous. But as the ancients knew, you mix the poison with its blood and you get a medicine. Hence, next to that snake's head there, we get the, the RX symbol and the snake in the cup for pharmacies. <laughs> yeah. Right? That RX is PX. And we can prove that by the fish that's above that RX there, the metal fish, has PX on its side. And that's a lamp. This internal juices that that is fiery as you could say this uh, the medicine is is a fiery thing it's got activity in it yeah. so those three fish sorry all four of those fish are related to osiris they're the ones that ate his, his penis and all of them are spiky the top left is a nile perch spiky fish you know it's a fish that swims up but it might hurt you the snake comes out, it might hurt you, but if you can catch it, you can derive medicine from that snake. Sure. It's these unconscious things. It's the universe doing horrible shit to you, or maybe exciting th shit to you, but you've got to seize hold of that and make the best of it. Your house blew up. I'm really sorry. But now you get to build a new house and put all the things you've learned from building that old house and all the things between and you get to make a new house and it's better you know it's this idea of taking the crap in your life turning lead into gold <laughs> and this <laughs> is why yeah. the serpent is saturn he's the greater saturn cetus the serpent is this greater saturn idea is he is the, the great serpent the great dragon when life gives you lemons exactly that make lemonade mm -hmm. the universe is always going to be there's always Yin and yang, yep. order and chaos. Exactly that. Chaotic and things are going to happen. The only thing you have control of is how you react to them. Exactly that. That serpent is chaos. The unconscious outside, because chaos is unconscious. You don't know it's order. No. And then you make order from it. Uh, Bardock fought Tiamat, the dragon of time, yes. and the maternal dragon. Cuts it up and makes things from it. And this is exactly the same thing. Again, Jordan Peterson talks about the Babylonian myth and Tiamat and... Does he? Order and chaos, yeah. I, I do like Jordan, you know. Yes. He gets a bad rep with a lot of people, but uh, those people clearly just haven't listened to anything at all. Anything. They've, they've not read or listened to him. That's the problem. Yeah. It's, it's political. It is political. We need to stay away from politics. Yes, we do. It's polarising, is it? Yes. That, that serpent is polarity. He's good and bad. He's... The washing up's on the side. I can't be bothered doing the washing up. <laughs> I'll, the longer I leave it, the worse it's going to get. If I do the washing up, something good comes out of it. Just clean your room. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So this is this holds the resurrection power. Just this fish ate Osiris's willy, and that contains his resurrection power for the year. When it gets stuck back onto his body, actually another one gets made out of gold, hint, hint, cool. and stuck onto his body, and then he gets resurrected. Yeah. But um, we're, we're dealing with these fiery uh, fiery I mean by active these fiery fish the fish on the top right there is a momerous fish which because it lives in very murky waters sends out an electrical signal 
and basically has an auric field around it that it can sense things with. And when you grab hold of it, you can feel a tingling buzz from it. It looks like a fucking leaf. <laughs> it's a weird looking <laughs> thing, isn't it? But you can wow. see, if you look underneath that, is another Momorous fish, a Christian Momorous <laughs> fish, with a PX on it. So it's just showing that RX, PX, it's basically drugs, and this Pulsar stuff are all connected. Yeah. Uh, we've got Saturn that stood on a pillar with a wheel, holding a, a, a bag of fruits. And a dress. And a dress. These bag of fruits would be the same as the medicine, you know, whatever you've managed to reap from that hard year. His legs yeah. growing back as well. It must be good fruit, that. <laughs> He's doing well, isn't he? <laughs> We're waiting for his hair next. <laughs> so that bag of stuff, which is his year done well, he's the because time is that serpent, you know, the, this measuring serpent, and because from time, oh, we'll, we'll go into it later, but uh, basically that bag of stuff that he's got from having a good year is the same as dealing with that serpent is the same as in the top right we got a dragon with its gold you deal with the dragon the unconscious bullshit that you got to deal with that you don't understand and scared of then you can reap the gold um a, a serpent is shared fear of serpents is shared by everybody if you're a cat, you've seen cats with cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just freak out because they think it's a snake. Mm. So it's this ancient thing, and a serpent in a tree is just the same as a serpent coming out of a hole. It's the same as a fish coming from the depths. It's these unexpected, unconscious, it's the unconscious of the universe coming up and going, ah, I might bite you, oh, fuck, catch it, milk it, medicine. <laughs> yeah. So now we have these... If we look at the caduceus, these are the same thing because you can see they determinate <laughs> that caduceus there terminates in a cup. And that cup is this same basket idea, the medicine in the cup. It, it's what you derive from dealing with the bad things that come up in life. And then, so, too, we have um, Buddha under, or whoever it is, under seven serpents. And those serpents are the chakra. Seven chakras? Because those are... Seven unconscious things that control you, if you get me. They're nothing to do with I didn't choose these things, but they control me. Just like the seven planets control me. The seven planets are seven serpents. The seven virtues are seven vices. If you can control these seven things, and if you can transmute them in a nice alchemical fashion, you can have what would bite you become medicine and protect you. Right. So I'm not. if you weren't very good at speaking, for example, you could... Let that chakra relax, work on it, do whatever, work on that planet, work on this concept, this idea, this this strata of metaphysics. And then when you released it, you can then be good at public speaking or whatever it'll be. Just basic communication, you know, let, letting your soul out and talking to people. Whereas the, the, the serpent, we get the cup of medicine, the fish, you can eat the fish. You get food at the end of it. You, 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 it's difficult catching the fish. It's difficult landing the fish. It's difficult grabbing hold of the fish. But then you can eat the fish. And so this analogy then goes into the Kundalini stuff. And the tree of life is the Kundalini. The serpent in the tree is the same as the seven serpents behind Buddha. It's the same as the seven planets up your spine, the chakra. They're all the same thing. That these things that work on you unconsciously. My sex drive works on me most of the time unconsciously. I'm always thinking about it. <laughs> it bloody rules me. And if I can make that conscious, take that energy and put it into something else creative, that being a creative force, then I get something good out of it, don't I? I can turn, uh, if it was something sad, you, you could turn your, oh, we keep saying this house blew up. You know, we can turn this house blowing up into a new house or I could write a book about it or whatever else. Yeah. So if, if I knock on quickly, Jesus at the Sea of Galilee, Peter's seen him, cast his nets to the right, caught fish. Well, it, that's exactly the same analogy as a gnome sat on a mushroom catching fish. It's the, caught a brain. It's caught a brain. <laughs> and if you look on that brain, the left side of the brain is your left brain, the analytical brain. 
And the right side of the brain is the creative brain. So if you cast your next to the right, the feminine serpent side, because Eve, Eve is to do with that serpent, the serpent side, this unconscious side of you, the moon, the sun being the consciousness, the moon being the unconscious, Saturn being the unconscious. Jupiter, yeah. Yeah. So you can catch these fish. These fish are psychic memes, psychic things. It might be... Uh, see, I had, I had one that came into mind, but I, can't, I really can't say it. Why? It, it's, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you another one. I had another one the other day, and that was I was in the bath. I fell asleep in the bath, and the dream was in the bath. And there was a, a squirrel on the side that looked like he needed resuscitating. And he, ca he came to life and he swam over to me and he became a rat. And then after thought, I knew what he meant straight away. And it was that I've been doing this too much, right? <laughs> Basically, and the way I've been going about keeping my existence going while I've been studying all this stuff has been akin to a rat. Grabbing this from here, getting that from now. I can wheel and deal this. Do you get me? Scavenging. Scavenging, Scavenging yeah. yes, yeah. to get this done. And now that this is being concluded, I need to be more like a squirrel and store things away for the winter. And, you know, and that squirrel wow. was nearly dead. So yeah. that's totally what it was. So the, these are these fish that swung up, and I ate that fish. I understood. I, I caught that dream. <laughs> I wrestled it, and then I ate that fish. Now, off to the bottom right, it's, it's not very easy to see. But that is a, st a story of Job. Job oh. sends his son out and goes, oh, get me my silver from the bank. Silver is the moon. Silver mm. is the unconscious. The right brain, more than the unconscious, but the right brain deals with the unconscious. Sends him to pick his, get his silver. On the way back, a fish jumps out and swallows his leg. This fish is the same fish as that upside down fish, the same fish he's caught there. Mm. And... He's like, fucking hell, fish, get it off me. And it's literally swallowed him up to his knee. And then they take it out and beat the crap out of the fish and pull it off. And then like, God, that, thank God that's over. You know, I need to get this this money back to my dad. And, and that's horrible. Oh, by the way, his dad's blind. An angel comes down. The reason why his dad couldn't go out and pick it up on the money himself, he's not, he's not lazy, he's blind. An angel comes down, says, oh, don't worry, Job's son. <laughs> Job Jr. Where were you five minutes ago? I'm just had a fishing yeah. leg. <laughs> he said, I was always there with you, my child. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> if you take this fish, you can make medicine from it to cure the sight of your father. And that's what he does. He goes home, makes medicine from the brain of the fish, and does it, uses it to cure his father. Essentially, being his consciousness, he, he you know, he's, he's he's healing himself, he's healing his sight, healing his vision, and that through treating everything, good or bad, that's unconscious that comes up philosophically, you can derive medicine from it. And this medicine, because you're dealing with a dual creature, a dual serpent or a dual fish, that duality is a singularity, is the same as the pole star because it reunites you. What you need, the food you need to make you whole again is in these duality creatures that you're conscious, it's unconscious. The masculine and the feminine come together, make the sacred androgyne and complete the philosopher's stone, essentially. <laughs> the holy grail, whatever you want to call it. Oh, my word. Right, so we're gonna we'll, we'll do a quick one here, and the way yeah, we've got two slides, and and then the yeah, we've got to wrap up soon. Yeah, so uh, I think we should come back to this one more, a little next time. Well, there's a lot going on. There's Fucking a lot going hell, on there's there. About but, twenty pictures in there. Yeah, <laughs> but the this is the story of Aquarius, and what's in his picture with the Ambrosia, and what his story is, <laughs> and you can see if you're looking, it goes from in the bottom. Uh, you know, at six o'clock at the bottom, it's Noah's Ark. And if you go all the way around, suddenly you've got a bird having sex with a young boy. And then we've got magic mushrooms everywhere. And uh, that bird having sex with a young boy is God coming to have sex with you, making you his bitch. And the result of that is he gives you his fertilizing spiritual goo <laughs> in a Lovely. cup. Lovely. In a cup. 
Yeah. Was it in uh, mythology who used to shape shift Zeus, Zeus and then just go in uh, have it have sex with mortals? Everybody. Yeah, he, he's the reproductive principle. He's the sex force that we'll get into. Uh, and then is that a Rebel Alliance symbol as well? Just on the on the middle picture, okay. bottom left of it, the uh, turn that up. Whoa! Yeah. It's either that or it's, it's a. It, it could be a Romulan <laughs> warbird. It could be a Romulan <laughs> warbird. <laughs> if you flipped it upside down, it's a mushroom. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> But right, so I'd like I'd, I'd like to do this for you quickly, just to show you how at the beginning we, we men mentioned. Uh, we'll go, by the way, we're going to go to that last slide again next time. Yeah. But we were talking about uh, these things have several layers of meaning. Now, uh, we, we, there's obviously a moral, the you know, listen to your unconscious, cast your nets to the right, and you you'll you'll be able to get these little memes of information and be able to decode and use for your life because your unconscious knows what you need. Right. Now, Jesus, once Peter casts those fish out, Jesus goes, there'll be 153 of those little buggers. Yeah. And Comple sure completely random number. Yeah. And sure enough, there's 153 fish. Now, the Jesus fish comes from that we can see there on the left at the top comes from something called the vesica pisces or piscis um you can see why people would say pisces because it's the fish but it, it it means the center of the fish the bladder of the fish they often say or the womb of the fish now a vesica pisces is two circles intersecting each other the edge of one meeting in the middle of the other mm. simply put if you do lots of maths with with this structure, which is very, you can see why it's sacred because so many numbers come out of it that are called the metal means. So you get golden ratio and square root of two and all these other things. Well, if you measure from the, uh, if you measure the width of this fish that's created by the two circles coming together, you get two, you, you basically get, in contrast to the rest of the circles, the square root of three. Okay? Dead simple. And the lowest whole number way of expressing the square root of three is in a ratio. And that is 265 by 153. So there's your 153 fishes that you'll catch yeah. with the net to the right. There's lots of other diagrams there to go into it deeper. I don't need to do that. Have a look at those if you want to. But basically, 153 keeps popping up all over everywhere, as does 265. So 153 is the lowest whole number to describe the vesica piscis. As a, 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 to describe the square root of three, which is that ratio there. Everything built, just comes together. In. Yeah, built in. So the vesica piscis, Best which is like the, the prime... It's like the beginning of sacred geometry. It's it is. the first thing you learn to draw. Yeah. And we can see why uh, it, on, on that left panel, there's uh, a vesica Pisces next to the tail of the fish. And we can see it says like square roots of three, square roots of five, yep. square root of five to do with golden ratio. There's lot. There's lots of amazing things that pop out of that. And Pi. Pi's probably in there yeah, somewhere. Uh, it's just, a, you know, yeah. the, literally it will be, all be to do with pi. Um those interestingly are called the metal means the golden ratio being the golden mean yeah. so you can start thinking about what it meant when alchemists were transmuting the metals yeah led to gold so i think that is actually a perfect place to end it excellent <sighs> boom coming up next time guys we've got all the mushrooms you could require to fill your pummet excellent <laughs> can't wait for that well Gonna have to rewatch this again because there's yeah. just so much, isn't there? Thanks, Rain. Thanks for coming oh, you're again. Welcome, mate. Yeah, Thanks amazing. For the wine. Cheers, Rain. And uh, we'll be back for part three soon. Yeah. Uh, Good with that. Yes. <laughs> right. Catch you on the flip side. Don't touch that dial. We'll do some quick news deconstruction and some housekeeping, and then we're fucking off into the night. Bong. Ta ra.